Good afternoon, students. This is Professor Henderson, and today we are going to be discussing the chapter on urinary elimination, chapter 46 in Potter and Perry. So, it's critical as a nurse to understand the scientific knowledge of the urinary system. So, we have the urinary system is composed of the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. So, the kidney. The kidney is located behind the peritoneal cavity, and the left kidney is slightly higher than the right kidney due to the anatomical structure of the liver. What are some of the functions of the kidney? So the main function of the kidney is to filter waste product. It's a filtration system. It filters waste product. It maintains also blood pressure. And the way it does that is through the RAS system, angiotensin aldosterone system, in regulating blood pressure. Another function of the kidney is to maintain electrolyte balance also. So those are some uh, basic function of the kidney. Now let's look at the ure ureters. The ureters are attached to each kidney and pelvis, and it carries urine waste to the bladder. So the ureter main function is to transport urine from the kidney to the bladder. And it's attached to, um, the ureter is attached to each kidney and pelvis. The bladder, what are some functions of the bladder? The main function of the bladder is for storage of urine. The bladder lies in the pelvis cavity behind the symphysis pubis and it stores about 400 to 600 ml of urine. The urethra, on the other hand, the urethra in female, female has a shorter urethra. The female urethra is about 3 to 4 centimeters. On the other hand, the male ure urethra is about seven to eight inches. This is one of the main reasons when you're inserting a Foley catheter, for male, you insert it seven to eight inches, and as for female, you insert it three to four centimeters because of the, um, in female, it's shorter than male. So also, the, the, the kidney also consists of something called nephrons. So nephrons are the, uh, consists of capillaries called glomerulus. And nephrons, they are the functional unit of the kidney. And their function is also to uh, maintain uh, fluid and electrolyte balance. We have a simple NCLEX style question here. Um, a patient with a long-standing history of diabetes mellitus is voicing concern about kidney disease. The patient asked the nurse where urine is formed in the kidney. The nurse response is the nephron. So that's a simple knowledge-based question. Okay, so this slide we have um, what are some of the indications for a Foley catheter insertion? So oftentimes in the clinical settings, the doctor may order a Foley catheter in order to uh, measure the patient input and output, output, strict input and output, I and O. Patients that come in in the critical settings like with um, diagnosis of CHF, renal patients, they might want to um, monitor their um, INO, so that's one of the indications. 
Another indication for a catheter insertion is stage three or four pressure ulcers or pressure injuries. A lot of times when patients are incontinent and they are bed bound, the doctor may order a um, insertion of a Foley catheter in order to um, prevent seepage of uh, urine into the um, pressure ulcer or um, feces into the pressure ulcer because the, it's required that the patient remain uh, clean and dry to promote um, wound healing. So they would order a catheter to be inserted. Another indication is also neurogenic bladder. A lot of times that, that patients with neurogenic bladder may require uh, insertion of an um, indwelling catheter or a straight catheter. Another indication is benign prosthetic hyperplasia. That's another indication why a patient may need a, um, a Foley catheter. Spinal cord injuries. A lot of times patients with um, spinal cord injuries um, have an order for straight catheter where they go in with a straight catheter and empty the bladder. Pre and post procedures, a lot of times you're going for surgery, the doctor, they may order a, um, a Foley catheter. Patients coming out of surgery may have um, an order for insertion of a Foley catheter. So these are some of the indications for a Foley catheter. of urination. So the brain structures influence bladder function. Voiding, bladder contraction plus urethral spinter and pelvic floor muscle relaxation. So impulses is generated from the brain center that respond to the urge to void. The central nervous system or the CNS send message to the meticulation center and the external spinter muscle relaxes and the bladder empties. So that's a little um, pathophysiology about how um, the impulse of urine and how um, the voiding patterns are initiated. Factor influencing urination. There are several, there are numerous factors that influence urination. As we know, growth and development. Um, the, the, the urinary system is not developed. If a child is, you know, you have an infant or you have a small toddler, um, they start potty training around two to three years of age. So that's when the system is still developing. How about so, soci, social cultural factors? Also, social cultural factors also influence the um, urination, certain gender. Some patients don't like to, um, to use public bathrooms. Um, a lot of times they will wait until they get home to use the bathroom to urinate and that's not healthy because that's urinary stasis that could um, predispose them to um, a urinary tract infection but it's also a social cultural factor depending on their um, their values their cultural um, upbringing how about personal habits Personal habits, some people when they use the bathroom like to, um, they like to listen to music. Some people like to um, hear the sound of running water. Some people like to read a magazine in the bathroom. These are all um, personal habits that influence urination. Also um, fluid intake. It's critical that patients have adequate amount of fluid in order to um, have a, a healthy avoiding patterns. If you're drinking, your fluid intake is limited, your urine can be concentrated. And that's also um, 
a risk factor for developing UTIs if you're not drinking adequate amount of fluid. Certain, um, certain medications can also influence urination. I have an NCLEX style question here. When inserting a Foley catheter, a nurse educator observed that the student nurse violated the concept of sterility throughout the procedure. What should the educator do? So the educator should actually um, instruct the student to discard all supplies and start the, restarting the procedure with new supplies. The nurse educator can also instruct the patient to go for, for um, remediation because it's evidence that the, um, the student nurse is not competent in um, inserting a Foley catheter in terms of maintaining sterility. So she needs to be, the student nurse needs to be remedi remediated so the nurse educator can refer the student to the skill lab for further um, remediation to enhance her um, skills. What happens if the student continues with the procedure? Well, we know what happened. The uh, patient can acquire catheter-associated urinary tract infection. And that's a big thing in the healthcare, uh, situ in the healthcare environment when a nurse is doing a procedure and they're not maintaining um, proper sterile feel, they can introduce microorganism into the urethra and the patient can develop a, a cauti, catheter-associated urinary tract infection. And we also know that C C CMS will no longer pay for patients in a hospital or long-term care facility that um, acquire a catheter-associated urinary tract infection. So that's, that's considered um, a nosocomial infection, infection, and they will no longer uh, reimburse hospitals or long-term care facilities um, for patients that develop cauti catheter-associated urinary tract infection. So it's critical that um, nurses maintain sterility when um, inserting a Foley catheter. Nurses um, also screen their patients for the um, appropriate indications for a Foley catheter. Common urinary elimination problems. So urinary retention. So urinary retention is the accumulation of urine in the bladder and um, due to the inability of the bladder to empty. So if patients are retaining urine, that's a perfect medium for developing um, urinary tract infections because urinary stasis, urine is just sitting there and they could develop a urinary tract infection. So it's important when a patient comes in in a clinical setting with the urinary retention that the nurse um, performs a um, bladder scan to, um, to determine how much um, MLs are in the bladder and also to do a abdominal assessment, assess the patient, palpate the abdomen to... Um, for, for any type of distension, the patient's abdomen will be distended. Um, they will complain of pain upon palpation. You could do a bladder scan to see how many cc's. And then the next step, you will call the, um, the attendant physician and get an order to insert a straight catheter to drain the bladder. So speaking about urinary tract infections, what are some of the um, signs and symptoms of a urinary tract infection? Oftentimes, patients will complain of dysoria, burning a burning sensation upon urination. Also, they will um, go to the bathroom very frequently, but they will just um, 
have a little bit of you 